Roughly 500 years, a pact between man, gnomes, and dwarves was created within a small town called Vandalin. This pact was known as the Vandelva Pact. The pact allowed all three races to share in mineral and precious metal rights of a cave known as Wave Echo Cave. The town and races nearby flourished with this agreement. The cave itself, honest of power unlike any other, in spellcasters from various races were able to harness this power to create a great forge known as the Forge of Spells. This forge possessed the ability to craft magical items and the town became more popular than ever. But with popularity comes trouble, and disaster struck the town of Fandalin in Wave Echo Cave. A group of furious orcs swept through the area, and evil mercenary wizards aided them in order to claim Wave Echo Cave. Much was lost, and none was gained. The area remained in ruin for centuries, uninhabited, except by those who wished to seek shelter amongst the ruins of Thandalin. History became rumor, rumor became a legend, and a legend became a myth. Many sought to seek the lost cave known as Wave Echo Cave in hopes that the rumor was true. All have failed. But hope remains with an individual known as Gundren Rockseeker, a boisterous dwarf who believes he has found the cave. He has hired three unlikely adventurers to aid him in finding and reclaiming the cave in hopes of re-establishing the Fandelva Pact. Join me on the ethereal plane in the year 1491 as we follow these three individuals in witness without intervening their choices. We will be able to see if they are able to achieve what Gundren wishes, if they will fall in their endeavor, or will they have other means? Much like time, all we can do is watch. The choice remains theirs, and the future will be crafted based upon those choices. Welcome everyone to Auto Save Before Entering presents The Lost Minds of Fandelver. <clears throat> we are now on episode 11. We made it so far. First, let me introduce our lovely characters. We have Hordal, our dwarven barbarian. Hi, time to smash some changelings. And a fighter. I forgot to add that. And then we have the, the Watcher, our cleric druid. Second start of the right and straight on the morning. I love it. And then we have our changeling sorcerer, Arthas. Hello there. Hello there. So last we left, our adventurers spent some time at the Sleeping Giant, getting to know one another, 
Portal discussed the magic that appears when he rages in his hometown of Twilight Tor. He shared that the occupants, to include his family, had disappeared and does not know what happened. The Watcher discussed that he took part in something known as the Last Great War and was a member of a combat unit that operated within the Shield Wall before becoming a druid. Arthas discussed his life within the circus and how it was not all just performing, but also about theft and assassination. An individual known as Cornelius the Bookkeeper arrived to talk to the characters about the magic within Tracender Manor. Our adventurers leveled up and awoke to a wonderful smelling breakfast. Arthas, however, woke up clutching the Staff of Defense in his hands. A voice began to talk to Arthas and took control of his body. Arthas then struck Sildar with the Staff of Defense and turned to Wardell and the Watcher and his face turned into glass staffs. So what we are going to do, I don't know why I said hoard all that way, but I did. It was, it was, I'm like, is it only half doll. my face? Half my face is glass staff. The other half it's is burnt. like burned because the last time you fought glass staff, no, you know, yeah. with a chromatic orb. So I figured I would at least give Arthas a little funny thing, even though his body has been possessed. Uh, let me just get my fantastic music because I love this song a little bit too much, perhaps. I know I was talking to some of the players about it um, before. Okay. Uh, difficulties. There it is. All right. And what we will do first, I need you, Arthas, to roll me a D6 plus your strength. A D6 plus my strength. So that is a four. Four. Okay. Thank you kindly. Uh, oh, wait. Watcher. Wait. Portal. Yep. Never mind. I was checking something. Oh. <laughs> a four. <laughs> Still a four. Still yes. a four. Once again, we pick up right as Arthas turned to you and his face turned into glass staff and half of it is burned. And he's got this weird grin on his face. All of you are taken aback. Uh, Arthas, I need you to roll me a wisdom saving throw with your own stat block. Wait, with my own? Yep. Not, the, not, not the... Not the added stuff from this, just okay, your own. Okay, okay. Ooh, not rolling good tonight. Wisdom? Mm-hmm. Uh, a three? Okay. <laughs> you guys all look. Is there anything you want to say? Or dollar just... watcher? Arthas, what the hell? Are you changing into glass staff for a joke? All right. Now I need everyone to roll initiative. Matt, 20. <laughs> no. I swear to God. <laughs> Balls. Nine. Brent, do I can am I, am I can I react in like talking wise to them or like to how they were answering that or no? You I'm can not. if you succeed on that roll that okay, I did okay. at the very beginning. Okay. So, so Hordo, you me got a I'm nine. Able to. Yep. Nine. Watcher. Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, nice. So that's that. Watcher. Or no. So there. Alright. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna change the map to our combat Ooh. map. 
タンタンタン。I haven't rolled a nat twenty in a long time. Oh, baloney! And of course, <laughs> it's been like a week. Oh, Droop's there. Droop is there. Droop's、oh. scared. As you all come in, Sildar is prone on the ground from that hit. Wasn't even expecting to get hit. Ah,、uh, Arthas, or should I say, Glassstaff? I'm gonna put a red around you. You get to go first, and you have the urge to attack your friends. Portal and the Watcher. I have no control over that. No、oh, control. Just one other question. I don't see it. Is the Mage guy there? I, I blanked on his name. Ah,、uh, Cornelius. Cornelius. Yeah, Cornelius.、Uh, no. No. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Okay. You do not see him. Okie dokie. All right. So. Not having control, Arthas is going to try and attack everyone and launch a magic missile. Okay, so bolts going at whom? One to each of everyone, and I will be doing it at level two. Level two, so four bolts.、Uh, oh yeah, so it's four bolts. That's right.、Uh, level two is four bolts. So. Uh, Hordal will get two bolts, and everyone else will get、uh, one. Okay, so two so, to Hordal, one to Watcher, one to Droop. Yep, and just do do the four different D fours, or just one and do the same.、Oh, four different D fours. All right, so the one that hits Sildar is a one plus one, so that's two. The one that hits the Watcher is three plus one, so that's four. And Hordal gets three plus one four, and another three plus one four. So Hordal gets eight. Who? Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Arthas, you just、uh, project. The bolts come flying out. Hordal, Watcher, you get hit.、Um, and then Arthas, you hear a very familiar voice creep in. Perhaps I will give you assistance. You feel this energy surge within your body, Hordal and Watcher. The area just to the left of Arthas starts to glimmer with a black glow. You just see it. It's almost like the area ripples. And then the smoke seems to peer out of what is almost a hole within the air itself. And this black mist comes, and you see two legs come out of the hole, followed by two more. And you see a spider pull its body out—a big spider. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and this is a giant spider that is sitting there, and you see the fangs of the spider just clicking back and forth. Arthas, you see that the spider turns its head towards you, and you can't help but give the spider a nod. The spider is your companion. Okay, Watcher. Or Arthas, is that the end of your turn? I should specify.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Watcher. Watcher, very confused.、Um, that he, everybody just got hit with the magic missile by Arthas, so he will、uh, do the first thing that comes to him. He will. He's going to use command, so he will. You know, his eyes will go black. He'll drop his shield into the ground. And、uh, he probably flavors it with a little bit of thaumaturgy, and he just like the loudest he anybody's ever heard him. He just like basically screams surrender at Arthas. 
scream surrender at Arthas. Okay. Yeah. And that is a... So wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. It is a wizard, yeah. Okay. DC 13. Okay. Now, Arthas, this is a regular wisdom saving roll with your stats plus the added. Okay. So that is... 17. 17. In you, Arthas, you feel this energy too within you, right? That almost boosts... Taking my head. Almost boosts this this weird power within you. And Watcher, you do not know, but you got a funny feeling the way that Arthas is smiling or Glassstaff is smiling back at you that what you attempted did not work. And uh, Sildar's prone, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, watch a little... Yeah, he's gonna go engage the spider, I guess. He's gonna move up and put himself next to the table in front of the spider to keep it from moving to... All right, so 30 feet, so 5, 10, 15 right here. So that's roughly uh, 15. It's a little bit more, but we go by fives. That's good. Uh, That's going to be the end of Watcher's turn. Okay. End of Watcher's turn. Uh, It is the spider's turn. Sorry, Hort, all your initiative was a little bad. Uh, I had suck. Uh, Watcher, seeing you come up, the spider instantly turns towards your direction. Face to face with this giant spider. He reaches out with both his, his, uh, well, I guess two of his legs, and you see his fangs come flying at you. Uh, give me a second. 17 to hit. Does not hit. Does not hit. Was it a shield hit? Yeah. You pull up your shield just in time as you see the fangs dangling over the the top of the shield, trying to get you as you just shrug the spider off. Okay. That is the end of the spider's turn. Portal. Portal screams at Arthas in Arthas' direction and goes into a rage. Let's roll it. My bonus action, so let's see what happens this time. Oh, I got an eight. Oh, so fun. Yeah, this oh, is good. Yeah. Eight is a good one. Uh, bolt of light shoots from my chest. Wow. Another creature oh, by choice. This is good. You can see within 30 feet, must succeed on a con save or take 1d6 <laughs> radiant damage and be blinded until the start of my next turn. You can use it again as a bonus action. Mm -hmm. Uh, So are you... Who? So that is is my bonus action now. So I can't use it yet. Correct. But in my rage, I am running right over the top of the table and coming down on Portal. You can, you can, because the verbiage says you can use this again as a bonus action. So that means oh, your initial your initial rage triggers it, and then you can use it again as a bonus action. Cool. Then I'm going to use it first before I jump over the table. At whom? At Arthas. At Arthas. Okay. Why me? You fucking hit me, bro. Uh, well, <laughs> how ironic so. to Arthas, because look at bullet point number three. But go <laughs> go ahead, Ordal. Uh, so it's. Um, a con save from Arthas first. Okay, so Arthas, you need to roll a constitution save and throw. You do not get any added benefits. This is your own stats. Uh, what's the DC? DC is 14. All right. And my, what do I get? Um, three. I got 14. Ooh, this is a weird oh. scenario. Both of you roll a D20. Whoever gets the highest, it'll work. Yeah. Rollies. Oh, you probably got it. 13? 
five. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there is a right. moment where describe the bolt for us though for Hordal. As as Hordal rages, he puts his arms out and then just this bolt of light just shoots straight from his chest at Arthas. Okay, you can see as soon as the bolt, the bolt almost stops like halfway or like right towards Arthas's chest. And you realize there's like this fight, this magical fight. But then the bolt just slams into Arthas. How much damage? Three radiant. Okay, so you take three points of radiant damage, Arthas. And he's blinded until the start of my next turn. There's no, there's nothing with, um, AC or anything like that. It's just nope. a straight three radius. Straight now, three radius. You, okay. you have you have the remember what you have too. So if need be, you could do stuff with that. Your staff gives no, you a yeah. plus one armor class. Just remember no, what the staff. Yep. No, go ahead. no, I remember that. I'm just wondering if if I if I could block that damage in, in, in any way, but it sounds like it's not. It's kind of like magic. Missile, That's a, it's an all or nothing yeah. Um, yeah. with okay. the con save. So if you pass the con save, you get nothing happens. Nothing. Yeah, you, it's you not. failed the con save. No, that's yeah. fine. It's that's perfect. the three. I was wondering yeah. if I could, if it was like an AC type thing. I no, it's not, it's, it's, not it's not a range spell. Like it's not like a range okay. spell or anything, but remember perfect. you have yeah. that. Yeah. Because yeah. that's crucial. All right, Hordal, that was your bonus action. As Hordal jumps over the table, he's going to take a swing at Arthas and go reckless. Okay, reckless. So yep. you have advantage only one time. Okay. Oh, not great. Uh, that's a total of 10, even with reckless. Not a five me. and a two. <clears throat> Arthas just jumps plus. around. Very athletically, acrobatically. <laughs> Portal, as you swing for someone that you know should be blind, can almost sense exactly where you are and quickly dodges yeah. out of the way. Okay, and that will be Portal's turn. Okay. Uh, Arthas, Sildar. Mm -hmm goes to stand up and you can hear Sildar move and you look and you can see Sildar right there. You can take your reaction to take a swing at him if you would like. Um, take a swing. Can I just kick him? Uh, you can use your staff. Your staff does oh. uh, 1d6 plus oh, uh, your strength. that's right. The staff, yep. the staff of defense does that. I, for, I, I forgot I had It's that. okay. Yeah, so I will, I will do that. Okay. So go ahead and roll. So, Tim, what's the hit on that? Do I get a pl plus to hit? Oh, yeah. I to it's going to be two. your strength modifier plus your proficiency. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to be plus... Two. So that is 10 to hit. Okay. Your staff of defense goes flying down and Sildar dodges it. Sildar is back up on his feet, but you notice that Sildar looks confused, right? And what he sees is Glassstaff, his friend, uh, look back at him. I need a quick intimidation roll from you, Arthas. Oh. Ooh, this isn't good. Stations. Uh, um, 16. 16. Yep, definitely beat Sildar. Uh, Hordal, Watcher, you notice too that Sildar tried to get up, and this is the first time that he is seeing his friend, Iarno Albrecht's face that is half burned, and he steps back. He just Sildar! looks at you. He's like, what? What the heck is going on? What is all this? Stop him. Okay. Uh, here we go. This is interesting. <clears throat> oh, poor old Droop. Uh, Watcher, you see an arrow go flying horribly, like har horrible shot just goes like flying right over 
the uh, spider and kind of like hits the the back the far uh, ceiling. And you see Droop like nobody hurts Watcher as he's ready in another uh, arrow. Hi, Arthas. It is your turn. Did you say we have to do a roll before I go or anything? Or yep. just straight up make So a make a now? wisdom saving throw. Thank you for reminding me. Keep reminding me because I got a star next to it, but I. With my straight stats. With your own stats, yep. Okay, so it's a 13. Nope. All right. All right, Arthas. Your turn. So now it's my turn. So. Uh, Hordal is right next to me, right? Pretty yep. much. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have disadvantage on ranged spell attacks that require yep. a spell attack. I guess we're just ranged spell Oops. attacks would be the term. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of armor are you wearing, Hordal? None. Leather. Leather? It's just leather straps. It's not even. Yeah, it's not armor. even armor. Oh, okay. All right, doesn't matter. All right, I am going to attack him with shocking grasp. Ooh, melee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is with advantage because he did no. reckless. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, that's why I was asking the armor because it would have been advantage if you had a armor on. Yep. Gotcha. But also, if, but because it doesn't he went matter reckless, anyway. yeah, you have advantage on attack against him. Oh, so that's 21 to hit? No, it doesn't hit. <laughs> yes, it hits. Got to find the right dice. There's too many dice. Oh. There's uh, never too six. many dice. Six. No, I'm just because in so. the other game, I use like the same three dice all the time, but Arthas uses all the dice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Arthas, describe to us what your shock and grass mm -hmm. looks like. So I just... See, with seeing you in front of me, I just put my hand out on your chest and pretty much is just like uh, Star Wars Palpatine's electricity just right on your chest. For it all, uh, you feel and this. You can, I said, you can't take any reactions reaction. until the start of next turn. So doing that, I will move back. Uh, and I am going to move kind of on top of the table over here. Like right here, kind of behind the spider. All right, so you're like stepping up on the table. Oh, yeah, and going on right. to the other side. Gotcha. Look at that. And Arthas, you do it in a very cocky manner, like very slow and nimble as you come up on this, on this table. Laughing, big smile. Oh yeah, as mean <laughs> as you can. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? I think so. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Watcher, it is your turn. Watcher will will shout to Sildar. Uh, <clears throat> Sildar, that's our, that's our partner, Arthas. He's shape-shifting again. Don't let his looks fool you. And... He will start to chant a new spell, a new druidic spell. Oh, I'm sorry. Before he does that, he's going to light up with, he's going to pop all the, like the starry form. So all of a sudden he's just going to shine real bright. He is all of a sudden going to, the lights are going to um, like cover his body and then grow. And you're going to see a, like a massive dragon all of a sudden appear in the light all around him. Um, probably kind of making the spider which I'm assuming is very large now, almost look a little smaller compared to, like, you know, this dragon now still in the room. And he is going to cast, as he starts to chant, um, Summon Beast. The Summon Beast, he calls forth a spirit, a bestial spirit, it manifests in an unoccupied space, and uh, it has a stat block here in the spell area, and creature an ally to myself and my companions the creature shares my initiative count but it takes its turn immediately after mine and it obeys, obeys verbal commands no action required if you don't issue any issue any of the dodge action uses it takes a dodge, dodge action that uses to avoid danger so he is going to 
summon a um, a small beast. I didn't think about what a small beast would look like, but maybe like a a badger or something like that. Um, it'll be a land animal for the purposes of the step block. I'm not hearing you, DM. I don't know if you didn't hear Sorry, no. Yeah, I apologize. I tried to click that button, but I uh, apparently clicked to the side of it. A badger? Oh, yeah. We <laughs> yeah. can do a... It, Hang on, what size is it? No. It's is it supposed creature, to be a small so creature? The stat block doesn't change, it's just whatever the Okay. Aesthetic. Does the does it have the attack stuff on that too? Or no? It does, yeah. Okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do then, just for sake being because I don't have a huge list of creatures. Um <laughs> Shame on you, DM, shame on you! <laughs> I am going to give you this guy. Where would you like him to come? Uh, is it a summon and he shows up, or is it a summon like he appears right there? Summon in, summon in any unoccupied space of my choosing. Okay. So where would you like him? So can can he squeeze? Can he squeeze like here, or is the bench in the way? Uh, no, he can. If he's a bad, he can go like underneath and like over by the, like underneath that little bench. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna do that, and then uh, Watcher will just say attack to him, and the thing, the, the badger will attack the spider. Okay. Roll. Uh, Spell attack modifier to hit. Okay, so that's plus five. Uh, 15 plus five is a dirty 20 to hit. That's a hit. Nice. Nice. Eight. How much? Oh, max damage. Uh, 1d8 plus four is 12, plus the spell's <laughs> level is two. So 14 piercing damage. Wow. Ooh. Don't hurt my spider. <laughs> <laughs> He's my only friend. Oh, Don't Roger, hurt my you, spider. You, you see this honey badger. He just looks at you and goes, because we all know what honey badger doesn't give. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that, is the, that is the end of my turn. Okay. Remember that the badger goes after you. That was a good, solid hit. That was a nice move, yeah. That was a good, solid hit. Uh, Spider's turn. Uh, Spider. Hang on, let me see if I... Okay. Uh, no, the spider is going to take another bite at you, Watcher. Spider is surrounded. Um, that is going to be, this one is an 18 to hit. That is my armor class. Goes to you, your shield. Wow. Clutch. Ooh. Shield once again. But you notice the fangs come in from the side this time and you just shrug it off. You, you can tell that the spider looks very irritated. Uh, okay. That is the end of the spider's turn, because he doesn't want to move. Uh, so we go Hordal. All right. Um, so before Hordal moves, he's going to just flex his pecs and uh. shoot the light at the spider this time. Okay. Yeah, seeing that Arthas still like was following, like yep. where when Sildar was getting up, where I was like, "Oh, that didn't work!" Yeah, <laughs> and just puffs out his chest at the spider. Uh, it's a nine for the con right. Constitution save. That's a fail. So he's gonna take 
five radiant damage. Five points of radiant damage. And you see the spider, even with it, like the hit, you see a couple of the legs on the left side shrivel up a little bit and then reach back out. Oh, five, got it. And then Hordal's going to shimmy around the spider to get into a flanking position with Watcher. Okay. And yeah. he's going to take a two-handed swing with Celeste. Okay. No reckless. No reckless. Okay. So yes. with advantage. Oh, that's better. Uh, 18 to hit. 18's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> two-handed is my D10. Arthas, if you could get rid of that little uh, yellow dot for me. Uh, yeah, I don't know four. why it's there. I'm not clicking anything anymore. Four right. piercing. Four points of Barely. piercing? Hold on one of my damage dice. You may have done pain, but it's okay. I, I may be able to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, Sildar, you see he fastens his uh, shield, draws his sword, and moves towards you, Arthas. Don't don't worry about it for now, Arthas. Yeah, it doesn't show see, on my screen. You can see this look of determination as he looks right up at what he once considered his friend. And he takes a swing. Uh, this is bad. Ah, uh, Sildar swings a seven to hit. That misses. Sildar then not in it. rears back and swings again. That's a nine to hit. And that misses. Dude, Arthas, you are invincible right now. I know. You are invincible. And you can see there is this weird look upon Sildar's face, Arthas, right? And he looks confused, but still determined to fight. And you can't help but smile at him just a little bit. Uh, Watcher. Oh, oh. <gasps> Drew? Watcher, you see this arrow go piercing in to the spider. Oh, my. My Lanta. You see this arrow <laughs> as the spider <laughs> literally like rears up, getting ready for another attack. And you can see its underbelly is like pulsating. And what you see is like a little bit of web. Right, and as it rears up, you just see this one arrow that comes flying and it hits the spider. You see the spider's legs like curl in, and you see this green ooze just like shooting out of the spider. And the spider turns around, and you can see its legs are like spazzing out. The spider is dead. But <laughs> Droop, nice yes, Droop. <laughs> you turn to look, and Droop is like, Oh, did Droop do something bad? That was great. And he's attacking with disadvantage, like all the time. <laughs> okay. Nice. That's uh, awesome. Arthas, Glass Staff, roll a wisdom save and throw. Me? Uh, wait, eight plus. Not and enough. Nine? Nope. Um, I just text you something, Brent. Can you just tell me it's gonna judge my turn? And then Arthas, uh, no. the shocking grasp no. of the, okay. re re the reaction thing, Arthas, is mm. that until the start of my next turn or your turn? Um, I think it's. I my think it's his. Turn. His turn. Okay. Can't take is reactions it? until the start of its next turn, so it's your next turn. Okay, so I, I have my reaction back. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, yeah, to, to be fair, the answer is... Uh, so this is a tough one, Arthas. So the answer is yes, but if you cast a spell as a bonus action, you can only cast a cantrip as your action. So the quicken spell allows you to use your action for something else, and then you can cast... Does that make sense? Then you can cast as your bonus action a spell that requires one action. However, if you cast a 
you, you can't cast a spell with an action, then you use your quickening spell to cast another spell with an action because that goes against the uh, the realm of the spell rules. The two spells and yes. the two spells and yeah, yes. okay, that's what I was. It actually about. took but me. You a, can do it. It took me a lot of digging on this and a lot of like yeah. forums, but unfortunately, that still sticks. The reason mm, that but, the quicken spell is there is you can use your action for something else, and then you can cast a spell that requires one action. But I could twin a spell and quicken a cantrip. Yes. Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. And that, that so, still okay. costs. That's, just look at the thing because it says that the cantrip it's uh, just, it's for the one. quicken spell is one. Yep. No, the. Yeah, I forget. Yep. One's one and one's two. But yep. yeah. Okay. So that, because that's one of the. That's kind of what I was thinking of doing because uh, if I were to move right now, Sildar. Uh, who would both of them have a reaction on me? Uh, no, Hordal is a little bit further I'm away. Just a so little Hordal too far. Not, yeah. What about Sildar? Sildar would. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So I am going to cast, uh, use two sorcery points and cast Quicken Spell. Okay. And use, let me mark these off so I don't forget them, and cast um, uh, Shocking Grasp on Sildar. Uh, it has to be, uh, I think it's a ranged. It can't be a melee. For twin to spell. do the spell? Or Not is it... twin, I'm doing quicken. I'm quickening the shocking grasp. Okay. That's a cantrip. So that should be one spell slot then. So or that's one, so one meta magic. Quicken spell. One yep. sorcery point. It's, one... No, it's two sorcery points for quicken. When you cast a spell, that has a casting time of one action, you can spend two sorcery points okay. to change the casting time to a bonus action. Okay, so we're okay. doing that as a bonus action. Okay, got it. I'm doing Sorry. that as a bonus action first. Okay. So that I don't get, if I when I run, I don't get, Sildar cannot attack me. Okay, sorry. So just, I just want to make sure I'm, you know, doing it right. But so to hit for that is uh, 16 to hit. Oh, this is so bad because it goes to the player. <laughs> <laughs> so for damage, it is eight. Eight points of damage. Okay. You and... see, and it's, uh, he is wearing chainmail, so. Oh, wait. So oh, it doesn't matter. Unless... No, I didn't get that 20. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so the it's shock the... Ah, it hits Sildar and you can see there's like this charge on him. He has no reactions. So I will run to the other table that's to the left of the uh, fireplace. I don't know why that yellow dot is still there. I, uh, it which, doesn't show up on my screen. It's okay. Screen. Which which way do you want to go? So here. Oh, there you go. Oh, it just moved. Yeah, it's based okay, on your mouse. Okay. Are you going okay. straight across or are you coming over towards Fordall? Or are you uh, coming around kind of Sildar? Try kind of jump over Sildar and, and just get pa past him. So oh, after you're... I shot, I figured I shot and grasp and I just kind of run across this thing. Okay. Like, I'll allow it. Right there? Oh, yep. So close. So close. I'm sorry, Hordal. That's okay. And, and to be fair, because the table's there, like you would be a little bit more yep. on the side. I was just chomping at the bit, that's all. Yeah. You're close though. All right, now Arthas, so then what I will, else would you like to do here? I will turn turn back around and cast uh, Chromatic Orb, but I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to twin it. Twin it, okay. Uh, I'm just figuring out. I do apologize, so, Arthas, earlier. Because of the way that you did it, I was, like, confused. <laughs> but you're no, good. No, no, that's... You're good. Yeah, so I will be casting Chromatic Orb uh, at second level. Okay. And using and twinning it. So let me mark off. So that's two sorcery points there. So there goes my sorcery points. Okay. So, and I will be attacking one to Horde All and one to Watcher. Okay. So to so hit. Range spell. Yep. Yep. So for Horde All, that is a 18. 18 hits. All right, let me add these up. And I'll tell you what it is of fire damage. Fire, always fire. It's four, mm -hmm. it's four, D, four D eight. Uh, 
So that is 17 damage. 17 points of damage. All right, are you using a spell portal. slot of, are you using a second level spell slot? Yep. Yeah, he said second level. How many, okay, so you're out of uh, sorcery points. I'm out of, I used all my soul four sorcery points on this turn. Okay. Two to quicken, uh, shock and grasp, and then two to uh, take a twin it. It does it okay? Two to twin it. Yep. Okay, you're good. Yeah, because I'm because I'm doing it at a second level. Gotcha. If I did a, a first, a first level, level? It yep. one. Okay. Yep. Tracking. Just want to make sure that we're not violating. You're good. Yep. <laughs> so the second one will be to watch it. Yep. And that is, ooh, this one might mess. Let's see. Thirteen. Yes. Oh. Damn it. All right. End of turn. Ah, uh, that's my end of turn. I just okay. start laughing on the table. <laughs> you hear a voice. Yes, my love. Embrace it. Okay. Uh, we have Watcher's turn. And don't forget Honey Badger. Yeah. Uh, quick procedural question. I'm, so I'm running concentration for the Honey Badger. I can still cast a non concentration spell, though, right? Correct. Cool. Um, how's Fort All looking? Fort All looking funny? He's standing, but he's bloodied for sure. You know, Hordal does not fare too well with magic. Mm -hmm. uh, he fares better with uh, slash and piercing and bludgeoning. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's taken a few hits already too. Um, okay. So in that case, start with a bonus action healing word for Hordal. Okay. At first level, so let me roll that. That's a uh, four. So that's going to be five points of damage. Uh, five, point, five points of damage. Five points of healing for Hordal. <laughs> Watcher decides, hey, I'm on glass staff side now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Inflict wounds instead of cure wounds. <laughs> now, your <laughs> command aura, I don't think technically takes effect because he's outside of five. I mean, it would if yeah, there was I mean, a creature within command, reach. There's nobody to attack. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Got it. So, Sorry, okay. Ordo. He is going to move. Nah, it's okay. He's going to move. Watching is going to run to Arthas, and he's going to try to grapple him. Okay, let's see if we can do the movement. 5, 10, 15. Yes. You should be able to. 5, yeah. 10, 15. Yep. Put you right up. You're going to attempt to grapple interesting concept so now it's gonna be a watcher you need to roll an athletics check and then arthas you can either roll an athletics or acrobatics what you get i got a nine we got an 11. i rolled a nine watcher but I get a plus two. <laughs> you you go out to reach and Arthas just or Glassstaff quickly raises his leg out of your range. Um, okay, so then that's the end of Watcher's turn. But now I am within melee distance, so I'm gonna tell Honey Badger to attack, and because he's a land animal, he gets pack tactics, so he'll attack with him. nice. Okay, how far can the creature go? I think uh, it's like 30 or... I think it's like 30, but let me check. Okay, 5, 10. Speed is 30 for a lane animal, yeah. <laughs> okay. You see, Watcher, as soon as you call the badger up in Arthas, you find it weird. There's this creature that just jumps like on the, on the, uh, the little bar stool and then jumps on the table. Pack tactics. So he rolls with advantage. Uh, I'm glad I have that because I need that. That's only a 13 to hit. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, it's a 13 to hit. It's my spell attack. Okay. Nope. That's a miss. It's a miss. <laughs> okay. 
Not a great turn. Okay, that's it for me. That was Cur- a great turn. You helped out Hordal. Curious too with that <laughs> with that uh, beast. Does he have the uh, knocked prone on there? I'm just curious. That's all. It doesn't. No. Okay. I don't Perfect. think so. No. Just pack tactics. <clears throat> okay, Hordal, you are up. All right. In his rage, Hordal is going to run around Watcher and get into a flanking position. So uh, five, on the other ten, side of 15, 20, 25. Yep. Yep. That's all my movement. And now that I'm flanking, I'm going to Advantage. swing two hands with Celeste. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Natural 20! Oh. <laughs> yes. mm. and, and I'm going to use Disarming Strike now that I've hit. Okay, so first we do damage. So with Celeste two-handed, that's a total of 10. Uh, Arthas, yep. uh, shield will not work in this that's scenario. What I was ask. That's what I figured, okay. It would have been, a, it would be a 25. Yeah, shield. If I added my modifier. Even so. regardless, if it's a natural 20, it's a natural 20. There's no. Hell yeah. All right. So 10 plus, ooh, eight plus two for rage. So there's 20 damage right there. Oh! <laughs> Arthas is going down. 20, 20 piercing. <laughs> and I'm going to spend my superiority dice, which I get to add to the damage. It's a dice roll. Does this also get back? And then uh, I get no, two No, unfortunately. It's just the main one. And, and we can okay. talk later about it because this is technically the way we did it is like another attack that just adds Got it. more damage. Okay. Um, Arthas, you need to make a strength Save well, let's let's place. roll. Let's roll the one d six first. Got it. Ooh, five. So five. I add, tack on another five. So twenty five total damage. I think Arthas is hanging on by a single thread. No, no, I'm done. Oh, twenty five is it? I only yeah, I had twenty three hit points. Oh, okay. I thought you had twenty six yeah. for some weird reason. No, because ah. I did twenty. I had twenty six. <laughs> Hordal. So Hordal, hit me, Hordal hit me with the three earlier with the uh, sunbeam. Yep. You have the option to choose how you wish Arthas to go down. Glass that. So you can kill him and put him on death saves, or mm-hmm. you can choose to knock him out since it's a melee attack. Yes. So Hordal's coming, and Hordal is just swinging sideways with two hands with a <laughs> Celeste. Yep. To knock out Arthas' feet. And then with the extra part, he's just going to elbow drop him in the throat to knock him unconscious. Okay. Who's a rock? This. He's Because he's standing right next to the table, table knocks yeah. Arthas to lay flat, and just pow, right in the throat. Arthas, your feet get kicked out from under you. As you slam into the table, you feel this elbow come and hit you in the face. Uh, Hordal, you start to see Arthas's face turn back into Arthas. And Arthas, you hear, before you black out, a voice. Hmm. A disappointment, much like the rest of them. Gain their trust and kill them when you wake up. Pour it all. With the continuation, you try to do that that movement with the mm-hmm. wrist in order to loose the staff, and you know that he is unconscious, and this should be the easiest thing you've ever done. But as soon as you go, he is not letting go of the staff. Matter of fact, you find it weird, and you just let the arm drop, and the arm drops off the side of the table, holding the staff. This doesn't make any sense. Sildar comes walking over. What? What was that? Something took control of him. It wasn't Arthas. That wasn't a joke. I mean, look at me. Watcher. Watcher will tie him up. 
and you notice like hand. when you when you tie him up, he still got the staff. Leave the hand free. Just don't drag me to the streets. Okay, uh, <laughs> Hordal, do me a favor and just roll a one d four for me. Yes, sir. One. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> so. He is knocked out. He's breathing. And Hordal, too, mm -hmm. you realize after the hit on the ground, you know Arthas is squishy, so you didn't push it too far. Mm -hmm. You see... Uh, you, you... <laughs> Go ahead. I have an idea if we need it. Arthas won't like it, though. And Hordal pulls out a hand axe. Someone unconscious should not be able to hold on to something this tight. Now you need a hand to hold on to something. We could take the hand. It's my sling hand. You're you're not awake. <laughs> no, you're, <laughs> you're passed out. No <laughs> lie. Just saying, it's my sling hand. What we will do with that decision, we will hold tight and we will go to intermission. Great fight. We'll go to intermission, a quick intermission, and then we'll be coming back. All right, so hold tight, guys. It's never going to get ugly. We are back, everyone. Uh, didn't do that fire thing. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with it, but hopefully everything's working. Got the speakers back on. Uh, so we are kicking right back to where we left off, which was, I think Hordal was trying to suggest that we cut Arthas's hands off. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the staff is doing something. Has to be. It's the only thing that's changed. So we removed the staff. We removed the problem. Oops. Sorry. Sildar just looks at you and goes, oh, wait. Okay, so let me get this straight. So he can't let go of the staff. We think the staff is the issue. 
But won't Arthas need his hand? I don't know how Watchers magic works. Ar Watchers are looking at Arthas, and everybody can see his head like, like tilting, like mechanically. Like he's trying to figure out what to do here. He's really confused. He, and he nods at Hordal and says, "It could be something with the staff, or it could just be Arthas. Like, did, did he swap with class staff?" I'm, shape changing makes it really confusing we i'd like to his, give him his focus as well if and we should take the staff and his hand and his focus so watch will reach out and grab uh, his focus grab hang on say that again his arcane focus okay he has one right yes he does uh Arthas, what is your arcane focus? Is it a necklace? It's my di the diamond. The diamond? That okay. I use for, for chromatic That's orb, right. yeah. Gotcha. Ah, right, so you, like, pull that out of Arthas's reach. <clears throat> you guys all hear the doors kick open in a voice that's all too familiar. <laughs> You hear the doors, da, ha, 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 silly Sildar, I'm here to, to uh, what? Well, what, what transpired here? And it's Cornelius. 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 Yeah, here, what? quickly. Quickly, uh, quickly is not my thing. Like now. Oh boy, you know, when people summon me, I make them pay money. But nonetheless, you're friends with Silly Sildar, so I guess I'll come on over. Now, what is a spider doing? That's a large spider. And he comes Hi. walking up over to you and just sits there and goes, Hmm. I knew we couldn't trust this Arthas. No, Arrogant Arthas. Staff. It's the staff. It's gotta be. Well, uh, uh, what happened besides uh, we're practicing our knots on tying Arthas up? I mean... He attacked us, Cornelius. He attacked <laughs> Sildar when Sildar asked for the staff. Then he shot magic. And now I can't get the staff out of his hand. Don't touch the staff. Leave the staff. Do not touch it. It could be a cursed item. Where did the spider come from? It just appeared like a like a voidy black hole, almost. Uh, it crawled out. Woodhouse! I need your assistance. Here, yeah, take a couple of these books. And some of the books levitate, and he just open. He raises his hand, and all the books come. Ah, uh, that spell always comes in handy. Control F. Starts looking at the books, and you notice the pages start going. And he's like, I've heard of things like this before. And he's like going down and you can see some stuff is like highlighted. Uh, cursed item, cursed item of this power. Uh, that's what it is. It must be a cursed item. Can't be removed from the hand. What can I do? What can I do? Woodhouse search. What can I do? Try to find it. And he continues and we to remove go. remove the hand, Cornelius. <laughs> uh, I... I would say that you could, but I think there's another way, Hordal. As much as I would love to see Arthas single-handedly in combat, that would <laughs> not oh. behoove him. <laughs> oh, 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 that's good. That's a good one. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes, too, with magic things, we like to keep all of our digits, nonetheless. Regardless of how many you have, of course. Hmm. But, uh, Woodhouse, just make a side note that we... We, uh, save one of Arthas's hands so we can make jokes about giving him a hand later on. Write it down. There you go. Uh, I think I possess a couple of spells that can help not remove the curse, though. However, I can separate the item from the individual. Unattune, if you will. Do it. Very well. Can you, um, move? Nah, one second. 
you notice he kind of does this weird uh, hand gesture. And what he does is he forms this weird looking door, right? And you see the door opens. And in the door, you see all these lights that are just glimmering. And then you see he just takes the spider, lifts the spider up with his hand, and the spider goes through this door, and then the door disappears, and the spider is gone. Well, that cleared out some room. Okay. Where'd the spider go? (laughs) Well, it's funny, because sometimes I can choose where they go, sometimes I really don't care, and I just open up the door and send them on their way. Stay on my nice side, Hordal. That sounds like a fun prank. Uh, sometimes it backfires, but nonetheless, um, sometimes people that you send through the door end up at your house, but that's a, that's a different problem, but let me see what I can do. I recommend that you all step back. This may take some time. You notice he starts doing... Uh, all these incantations and starts to weave his hands in this intricate design and you see Arthas's body rises up off the table and you see these bolts of energy that are yellow and white start to go around his body and then they start to spin faster You swear at one point you can see one light jumps from one side of his body through him to the other, but it's so fast and happens in a split second. You see this glow emanate from Arthas' body, and you start to see his hand and his fingers slowly open, trembling, fighting something from the inside as his body's hanging and then you hear see the staff drop and just like a glass staff hit in the floor it makes a ping 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 doesn't break and you see Cornelius is also still lost in this trance and he slowly brings Arthas's body down Arthas you feel the freshest air enter your body (gasps) you are awake and you remember what happened I do remember Mm -hmm. Uh, am I back down on that table Yep. I was, was, am I tied up like they were talking about? Your, uh, no, no, your, your hands would have been untied for this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just there laying on the table now. Well, you're like sit, sitting up with that brush of fresh air. You sit up on the table. You look over. You see Watcher. How does your face look? Probably the same as always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks the same. Um, his eyes are probably pretty dark, like not the dark he not the dark that it becomes when he's Claire casting, but like just going that way, like very, very um yeah. Gotcha. Hey. Or at all, how does well, your face look? Angry. DM, how does my face look? Did I change back or am I still No, you're you're a regular <laughs> white <laughs> you're white pale Arthas. Okay. You okay. became white pale Arthas right once you became unconscious. Did Cornelius have any, uh, he didn't know me as that shape. Did he have any reaction to that? Uh, no, you, I, I can't remember if you told Cornelius what you were, um, but Cornelius, no, he doesn't care. Okay. So I just wake up and I'm just like, Are you guys okay? Sorry. I, that was, I had no control over that. You see Cornelius, no one touched the staff. Is that what this was? And he walks over, he takes a cloth out and just covers the staff and he's holding on to it. You must not touch the staff with your bare hands. You didn't think to tell us that yesterday when you were inspecting it? 
and telling no. us what it did? Well, I you think... didn't think to tell me that not to touch it yesterday. Well, Arthas, I think you. So should you think start... that would have been some good, some some good uh, in- information? Instead, I you give it back to me and tell me all this information, and then have me fight my friends. Oh uh, well, you know, Arthas, you when say I you're told a good mate. you when I told you that you should be on the same page as me. Perhaps you should do some more uh, knowledge about the arcane works. Uh, identifying an object does not tell you whether it is cursed or whatnot. However, the us. individual holding an item as such can sometimes break the barrier and communicate. Were you able to do that at all? Yeah, something was talking to me in my head. Well, it was a spider. Actually, it was in the staff. Little was... guy. Little, 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 little guy. He just turns to the rest of you. Do not try to find the spider within the staff. Could be a lore, nonetheless. What else? You said you heard a voice, Arthas. Yeah, the spider's voice. It was talking to me. Yeah. Tell him, telling me to fight them. I had no control over it. Sorry, guys. <sighs> sorry. I'm just well, waving. Sorry. Sorry. I think you owe them more than just a sorry there, Arthas, because at one point they were about to... Um, I was going to cut off your, your hand. hand. Well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. There are ways to grow them back. Cornelius just laughs. Uh. <laughs> well then, Hordo, next time, perhaps I should just let you take off his hand. He doesn't seem that uh, useful at all with it, so... And I just turned to Sildar, and I, and I said, Sildar, now I know why you don't like this guy. This guy's just a, a quack. He just tells, says he knows a lot of stuff, and, you know, couldn't tell us the item was cursed. So Dar looks at you, Arthas, and goes, well, he did say that there are limitations to his magic. So he's not that great of a magic user is what I'm here. Um, I would suggest that you perhaps listen to Cornelius, although as much as I do hate <laughs> him myself, he tends to have a vast knowledge of this stuff. Still a little shaken, though, seeing Yarno Elbrick again. Oh, is that what I was looking like? Yes, you you changed into Yarno Elbrick, or what you know as Glassstaff, although half his face was burnt. <laughs> Probably because we burnt him. Hmm. But, yeah, I had no control over that. That was that thing in my head. You had no control? No. Completely blacked out. Any Arno had the staff. He was probably under the same, the same uh, possession or whatever that was. Wonder where he got it. The spider did say something about the others. I don't, I don't remember everything though. So sounds like there were other people that had been possessed. It's interesting. You see that Sildar's expression looks very, almost confused, and you can tell that he's getting lost in his thoughts a little bit. And you see that Cornelius looks at Sildar and sees this, and you see, as much as Cornelius probably tries to hide it, you can see that almost as if Cornelius knows exactly what Sildar is thinking. And Cornelius walks over to him and puts his hand on his shoulder and says to all of you, well, most items like this, it's um, it's typically the very beginning that possession takes over your whole capabilities, you see. After a while, however, the owner of the staff or creator tends to dive off a little bit as the corruption level has already existed within the individual. So it's a good thing we at least removed it from Arthas's hands when we did. Or else he could have been the next glass staff. You guys would have needed a new companion. I... We have Droop. He droops like, 
<laughs> Where'd the spider go? <laughs> he did kill the spider. <laughs> that group did. The one that, that was, was talking to me? The one that you summoned. I didn't summon anything. I wish I could summon stuff. Hmm. Speaking of summoning, I'm gonna go summon myself a beer. I'm gonna walk over to the the counter and grab a beer. Sildar just looks at you, Hordal, and watch her as you go over there, Arthas. He does realize that he just fought us and seems to be nonchalant about it. I always like a chipmunk. On to the next thing. Well, where's my next nut? Hey, you guys want any of them want to drink while I'm over here? One second, Arthas, Sildar says to you. He looks at you, Hordal, and watch her. Can he be trusted? I don't know. I'm not sure. Is that a yes on those drinks? Unfortunately, Arthur, some <laughs> of us are still talking and questioning your allegiance. My allegiance? I'm here. Yes, you are here. I'm not going but anywhere. You also attacked all of us here. and I did not attack you. Whatever was in my head attacked you. I had no control over any of that. That's true, but for someone who attacks one of their allies, you seem pretty nonchalant about it. I just wanted to get a beer. I offered you guys a drink. I think this guy should have told us that the item was cursed. <laughs> I Still told though, you would have been in the same, this. You would have been in the same situation if you had picked it up, or Watcher, he, he would have picked it up, or Hordal, they would have picked it up. Yes, Sounds but like I they would have been possessed. I think the difference between you and I, Arthas, is I would be pleading for my life and apologizing to both Hordal and Watcher for what occurred. Well, it looks like you guys won. You were going to chop my hand off. Yeah, well, I mean, they didn't look, chop your hand off. Looks like you won because they wouldn't let me do it. Well, it looks like you won because you guys are all still alive. We're all still alive. If I had won, then that means the person possessing me would have made me be defeat you guys and you three would have died and I would have been here sitting here possessed. Well, I think you're welcome for not killing you and removing the item, at least. But I don't think we'll get that out of you, Sildar says. I can tell you thank you if you want me to. I mean, I'm just, I'm here to do a job, and I thought our job was trying to, trying to find Gundra. And these are the bumps along the way. Hmm. Well, speaking of Gundren, hopefully I can get some news from at least Harbren. He was thumbing through the books to see if he knew anything about any of the castle ruins that were out there. Wasn't Droop telling Cornelius where it was? Where that castle was? It's the last thing I, one of the last things I remember last night. Well, Droop just knows Cragmar Castle. That way. Seems like the conversation was a little bit more in depth when I went to bed when you were talking to uh, Cornelius. Uh, Cornelius speaks up. All right, Arthas, that is true, but unfortunately, Droop is not too well in the navigation realm. Like, um, he knows directions based off of trees, the tree that goes to the left, the one tree that forks to the right, the one tree that's got those two bushes in the front, you go to left there. Um, not exactly um, a very navigational. So you weren't able to figure out where the, ca the castle is? Well, to be fair, I found out the information that Drew had, which wasn't enough to pinpoint the location, no. So, but Sildar so you said know where that he is? had harbor. <laughs> Cornelius laughs. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, this, you expect too much. From me. Nonetheless, though, it shall happen. Uh, Sildar said that he had individuals 
doing some history on it, so perhaps I can double check their work. Perhaps okay. Sildar just goes, well, I guess it would be not wise to take this glass staff out there to the people then. Hmm. So how do you get rid of a cursed item? Cornelius goes, well, you have to destroy the creator. But based off of this, I would say that the creator here had some help. I can't help but think that perhaps this individual known as the Black Spider is closer to achieving her goal than we suspected. After all, the Spider Queen does love chaos, and perhaps this was a way to create more chaos. So where do you want to keep the staff until we kill her? If we can't destroy it. <sighs> so Dar says, well, I can keep the staff and I can keep it safe. Of course, I'll keep it covered because we don't know the full capability of this. But Arthur's, this is your staff. So if, if the curse I ain't touching is that, lifted. I ain't touching that thing again. Well, fair enough then. I guess we will um, keep it right now covered. Try to persuade the rest of the town and... Perhaps it can just become a memento, right, once it's lifted, or who knows? Potentially destroyed some form or fashion. But we'll take care of that when the time comes. I would agree, Watcher. I would agree. The door kicks open, and you see a human roughly 20 years old that's uh, pretty built. Um... He comes running in. You recognize him as the man known as Lenar. He was the miner that Sildar was talking to at the Stonehill Inn after your uh, night of drinking there, in which you came down. And Sildar was talking to this miner that was talking about the orcs over at Wavern Tor. So same individual. Uh, he comes over and he's like, ah, oh, Sildar. Yeah, they told me I could find you here. Harbin's a freaking idiot. He can't do anything, but... I was sitting there, I was going through some of the books, I even talked to some of the miners. We were able to give you some of the information there. Uh, what's going on here? It seems like... Seems like someone farted in the room or something. Sorry. Alright, well... Fair enough. Be careful what you drink there, Hordal. <laughs> Sometimes it comes back to bite you in the morning. Yeah, uh, always does. But on this, we found roughly uh, what I think could potentially be four locations for what this uh, the ruins up to the north are. You notice he like lays down a map, and Sildar just motions for all of you to come over to the table. And Lenar lays the map down. Good. You notice that there are X's on the map. It's so funny, right? Right, once you go from a mouse to one of those like pads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lenar sits there and goes, "Well, so there, this is what we could at least find, or at least based off of the knowledge that we that we concocted up here." To the north, the furthest, uh, just to the east of Neverwinter, is uh, that place called the Ruins of Thunder Tree. You guys can all make a history check. Ten. Ten. Nine. Nine. Watcher. Eight. 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 Fair enough. So you guys know that Thunder Tree used to be it used to be a town, but when the mountain, uh Mount Hotanu blew up, 
right? There, there was this weird situation in which the undead kind of took over that area. And it was a weird event that occurred, and no one has been able to explain exactly what happened. And, uh, Lenar goes, well, you know, there's the one ruins here, not, not necessarily a castle, but at least ruins nonetheless. I mean... Um, but there are the stories of the undead that were there, and no one's really gone there. You hear Cornelius goes, Ah, no one except one individual. Uh, he looks at you, Watcher, and he says, Redoth. Does that name ring a bell? Go ahead and roll a history check with advantage, Watcher. A 12? You're not going. Oh, awesome. Uh, 19. Okay. Hey. Uh, read off. You know <laughs> no, he's, he's a human druid. He is a member of what is known as the Emerald Enclave. This druid society is based upon um, keeping society in the natural order in balance. So making sure that people cutting down trees and all that stuff don't go too far, you know, and then making sure that nature is preserved and trying to trying to teeter tot on that balance. He is an old human. Old, but he's known across the druids. He is kind of a loner. <laughs> right. And Cornelius smiles at you and says, ah, Redoth. He ended up going to the ruins of Thunder Tree in order to try to figure out the abominations that were there. He's been there for quite some time. Um, but last I checked, he hasn't really had any progress. He looks at you, Watcher, and goes, He's one of your kind. Surely you've heard of him. Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's concerning. He's powerful. Well, for him to have made no progress must be quite serious. He is very powerful. Yes, 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 yes. But, Wait, uh, when you say one of your kind, do you mean metal or like green people? Oh, no. What he's called the green people. He's he's human, not warful. Oh. But druids are all the same, regardless of what they're made out of. True. I just, I was curious because you said one of his kind and he's clearly different. <laughs> oh, I do apologize. I should get better with my words. But perhaps when all this is done, maybe even you could help him there, Watcher. And perhaps even tell him the events that have transpired in Trace Ender Manor right once I figure out what it is. But I would it's definitely that say is what needed. Go ahead, Watcher. If that's Sorry. what's needed, I if that's what's needed, I will take that to him. However, not particularly welcome amongst many of the druids because of who I am. Ah, uh, but he's a he's an outsider himself. He's he's really connected on the inside, but he's outside. He's an independent druid, if you will. Oftentimes, he himself does not agree with the other druids, but for the benefit of his purpose. Understood. But I must admit that I doubt that the the goblins of the Kragmar tribe would set up where there's undead creatures about. I doesn't make a lot of sense. Siljar just looks so safe to say that's off the uh, list then. Everyone agree? Yeah, it could be yeah. worth a shot someday. Mm. But doesn't sound like the hideout. Well, perhaps we could investigate it right once Gundren's found. Lenar just goes, okay. The next one that we have is a place known as Dragon Borrow. Now, this it isn't exactly what you think it to be. It's it's not really a ruins. 
but it's more of a, a hill that looks like a dragon of sorts. It's like a whole bunch of hills. Um, rolling hills, and, you know, we think that there may be something within the dragon burrow itself, but if there was anything, it would have to be underground. Aye, that could make sense. Spider queen, <clears throat> spider. But didn't they say castle? To me, a castle is above ground. I yeah. usually, but dwarven castles are in the earth. That's true. That is true, but I must, Sildar says, I must admit with uh, Arthas that if it's goblins, it's either cut into a hillside, a mountain, or just out in the open. Um, but it is a possibility nonetheless. Cornelia sits there. Anything to add, Cornelius? Oh, I thought you would never ask. Fair enough. This area, it's a its a legend. Um, not really a legend, it's true, but oftentimes stories tend to die off. But a long time ago, there was a fight between a Lady Tamer from Neverwinter. And apparently, she died defeating a dragon at that location. It is claimed that her body, along with her compatriots, were uh, buried at that location along with the dragon. Those who survived carry out her last wishes to be buried there. Mighty feat to slay a dragon. Stinks that she died in the combat, but mighty feat. Hmm. Oh, Lenar looks... I always wanted to fight a dragon. <laughs> Everyone wants to fight dragons, Arthas. It's just they are so powerful. Sounds like a game. You know, you go into dungeons, you fight dragons. Could be fun. Well, I must admit, dungeons are relatively... That would need to be a big dungeon in order for a dragon to be in the dungeon, but... I... Perhaps you Big can introduce dungeons. me to this game one day. Mm. Let's put it in the guild. Ooh. We play dragons and dungeons. It's got a good <laughs> ring. Lunar just looks, okay, well, uh, if we're done trying to talk <laughs> about games and a, a guild, which, mind you, I would like to circle back to that guild because that sounds interesting. Um, but right? then, then we have this place over here called the Seven Towers. Sounds promising. There's your outside, Arthas. And castles have towers. Now, last we checked, this place is in, relatively in shambles. Um, not really much going on there, but holding on by a thread. And no one's really gone up. Most of the miners have been down to the south and out off to the east trying to find uh, any precious minerals that we can. Um, but we just know that it's been there for quite some time. That's it? Well, that's all I know about it. Cornelius? Ah, yes. I thought you would never ask again. Perhaps I should just jump the gun next time. That sounds good. So... Seven Towers was created by one of my kind. A noble wizard, although I'm probably not the noble type, but uh, it does sound noble, Cornelius. Woodhouse, write that down. That shall be my title. Noble Cornelius the Bookkeeper. Thank you. And he was a wizard of a place called Forlorn a long time ago. And we're talking about the age of, I think it was like 610 to 615. Long time ago. It's 1491 right now. <laughs> and uh, Falorm was an area that pretty much reigned over this this land. Uh, and they were set up to combat a something known as the uh, what was it? Um, the Horde of Wastes. 
and that was a large, vast group of goblinoids that actually ended up destroying the whole kingdom of Falorn. I believe Falorn was known as, uh, what was it? The, the Forbidden Kingdom, I believe, or the Fallen Kingdom. I'll, uh, I'll look it up later. No, no time. So that I just looks at you and goes, well, that's possibly a location. Especially if these Kragmaw are descendants of the Hordes of Waste. They could seek to reclaim the last standing defense position of their enemies. No, oh, perhaps more of like a symbolic nature, symbolism, I... symbology. Symbolic Lismology, yes. No. Well, <laughs> Lenar's got at least one more. Lenar goes, That's well, the last one. The other one I, I, I think has in relation to do with um, the Dragon's Borrow. But that's this one right here, and uh, we called that one the Dragon's Lookout. It was a small little, uh, saying castle is a little bit too far, more of like a garrison, and uh, apparently it had a large tower that was overlooking more towards the water and out towards the land. Uh, yeah, assuming it was probably something, you know, in which to look out for any of the dragons that were there and to help muster troops. Ah, before you ask, Hordal, it's exactly as he said it. It's a dragon's lookout. It looks out for dragons. That's simple enough. Nothing, nothing else there? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Haven't there been sightings of dragons? <laughs> sightings of dragons. And you can see that Sildar Watcher kind of gives you like this eye. And Elias goes, well, you know, I travel far and wide. There's dragons all over the place. Um, but interesting to say, uh, have you seen a dragon here, Watcher? No, I have not. Maybe. But there were talks of one in the mountain. Oh, no, you're you're fine. Oh, that's what you say, Arthas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one in the mountain. You mean Cryovain, the white dragon. He's yes, been slumbering water. for quite some time. He hasn't really showed. I, I, Who knows if Cryovain is actually there or not, but that poor dragon himself. He'll probably remain hidden for quite some time, but... Wasn't there... Didn't we hear a story you, about a green dragon do, or something? Arthas? Arthas? What? How do what you... Now? Wake up a sleeping dragon. Perhaps tales of another dragon infiltrating their domain. Well, dragons are very territorial, so if one dragon was to come into another's domain, there would most assuredly be a fight. Especially if the dragons don't get along. That'd be fun to watch. Yeah, screw <clears throat> it. Tell them, Arthas. I thought I just did. There was, I thought we heard a story of a, uh, a green dragon that's been around here. A well, young one. Well, I mean, the the lady, uh, Lady Tanime, uh, she, she's the one, perhaps, you know, you've heard of this story, but I believe it was a green dragon in which she slayed on the Dragon Borrow. No, oh, I thought the one we were talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, Hordo, I'm trying to remember back. Wasn't no, it, you're like, right. Uh, Venom, Venom Fang. Venom something. Ooh. Young green dragon. Yeah, venom something or other. Sildar. Thing. Sildar just looks and goes, you guys just told the, the most talkative person up. about venom thing. <laughs> ah, just goes, the town already knew. <laughs> well, venom thing, I heard he's relatively young, a young dragon, a young green dragon, um, but trying to make a name for himself nonetheless. And um, I mean, if you say he's here, perhaps he could be trying to make a name of himself by taking out Cryovain. That would be an accomplishment. Now, Cornelius. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot go blabbering this about the town. 
But, oh, this is so good. But the town is already on edge. There is no need to tell them of a potential dragon nearby. Well, I mean, come on. We have a cursed Cornelius. staff over there. We have orcs, and now we have a dragon. What's a little dragon added to the mix, huh? I probably the it. last probably the last straw that breaks these townspeople's backs. <sighs> Lenar is just sitting there and is like, so there's a dragon. <laughs> Same goes to you, Lenar. It's only been heard of. We haven't seen it yet. Ophelia claims she was attacked by it, what? and the orcs that we saved her from saved her from the dragon. Hmm. But if the stories are true, it's curious to me why the dragon watchtower has not seen it and raised raised the warning themselves. Well, the dragon watchtower is relatively in shambles. It's an old watchtower from long ago. Not really manned or garrisoned from what I recall. But also, looking at this map, and Arthur's trying to put his finger down and goes, Looks like the watchtower is over here. And based on where we were traveling before, didn't you say she got um, attacked and they say they're more over here and points farther east? Farther I, to the east? Yep. Seems like it's far, farther, uh, kind of farther away where they probably wouldn't see it. Well, you know, Lenar says, well, you know, I mean, uh, I'll keep my mouth shut about the dragon. At least for the time Perhaps. being. If the dragon starts flying over, there's really nothing I can do. Of course. Uh, but most of the miners are starting to get some work. Uh, Halia Thornton, the uh, member of the Miners Exchange, is actually hiring some of the miners to go out. Uh, she's got like several claims of precious minerals that she wants us to go after, and it, which is nice. Typically, we go to her with our finds, but... She's hiring us to go take a look at a couple of things, so that'll keep some of the miners busy. Aye, good luck with that then. Yeah, fair hope enough. You strike, hope you strike a vein. Well, uh, I wish I could be more of help, but I'm sorry, Sildar. That's all I can muster. Sildar just looks at him. Lenar, you did okay. And thank you so much for at least picking up the slack of Harbin. Lenar just has respect. Well, you know, he's he's not good for anything. Uh, but you guys can count on me if you need anything. Thank you, Lenar. No, you're welcome. By the way, Halia Thornton speaks very well of you. And the town seems to be coming around, so keep your head up. Hey, hey, that's good. That's good news. That's the best news we've had all day. Well, take care, guys. And good luck on doing what you're doing. I sure hope you find whatever it is. And be careful. Aye. You stay safe as well. Will do. And he departs. Sildar looks at you. Well, so we have four locations. We have the, the ruins of Thunder Tree. We have... Dragon Burrow, we have the Dragon's Lookout, and we have Seven Towers. This right here I'm is thinking where seven towers. Pragma Hideout was. I Arth Arthas thinks Seven Towers. That's just my thoughts. I would have to agree with Arthas for once. Ho <laughs> ho! High five. Portal just gives you a dead stare. Cornelius laughs. <laughs> if he cut off your hand, Arthas, you wouldn't be able to do that. Just saying. Just saying. As my hand's up there, I cast Mage Hand to give myself a high five. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Watcher. Sorry, I cut you off. The Watcher just says it seems to be the closest. We might as well start there. Aye. If that one doesn't pan out, we move straight on to the lookout. Then from the lookout to the burrow. Up to Thunder Tree if necessary. Cornelius looks at you guys and goes, Well, it seems like you guys have your plan, and I've got a manor to inspect. <laughs> well, I will bid you all adieu. Need be. 
I'm glad I could assist in whatever uh, form or fashion that I could, but uh, stories to be told, not about dragons, yet. Yet. Good. And, for it all, I... right, right once you're able to do what you're supposed to do, please let me know. I'd like to document it. I will do. Uh, uh, fair enough. A wizard must go where he must go, and he must always arrive in fashion. You know, he just casts, like, press to digitation and, like, makes his, uh, makes his purple robe look even better. And he takes out, takes off. So now just looks at all of you, so... I guess seven towers is what we're we're betting on then. Hi. Do you want to take Droop with you? And Droop just looks at you, Watcher. Sure. That is Droop's decision. He wants to come or not. Droop would like to help Watcher. Guide Watcher. Droop, know the way. Right. Very well, Droop. But we're gonna have to get you some equipment before we set out. Some better equipment before we set out. Uh, okay. Nothing too heavy for Droop. Uh, <laughs> Droop, Droop lie. Tons of stuff heavy for Droop. Hi. <laughs> Mordo looks at him confused. Sildar just looks at you guys. Well. So Droop will go with you. Do you want me to come as well, or do you want me to stay here and at least keep things at bay here? Not gonna lie, political-wise, it probably would be best, and if something's in the staff, at least having me close to the staff may keep eyes averted away from you. Probably makes sense I, if you stay here. I don't want you to, but Probably the right choice. Just do me a favor. Gundren is a really good friend of mine. Same. I feel responsible for what happened to him. Just bring him back safe. That's the plan. That's the plan. Oh. I beat you to it, Arthas. You Quick did. that. Quick in that. I can't stand <laughs> to lose another friend on this. But make do. Well, well, Zildar, you gained three more. Well, three and a half. We got drooped. <laughs> that is true, and I ran into a boy who told me that, you know, adventuring is all about the companionships that you make, so... The people that accompany you on the way. Wise words from a boy. But... Wonder where he heard that from. Hey, he didn't tell me. And Watcher, you heard your own words just echoed back in the words of Sildar. Well, I must say, though, I feel like Arthas kind of did a number on us a little bit there, and uh, I think it may be wise to at least rest for eight hours before we take off on this. Hi. As you notice, too, he, like, touches his chainmail, and there's a little shock that, like, comes up and hits it. That's why I don't wear any. Yeah, I couldn't get away with that, Hordal. I'm too old anyway. Any of their uh, armor is uh, ripped or torn or got blood on it. Arthur says press the digitation and uh, cleans it off for them. Okay. I would say Hordal's leather straps were a little burned from your chromatic orb. Mm-hmm. Watcher's still Let's... holding Arthas's focus, for the record. <laughs> yeah, I, I... Watcher would say... <laughs> I don't think prestidigitation needs material components, though. Yeah, oh, I don't don't. think okay. so. Can trip. But Watcher yeah. is holding out your arcane focus. Oh, he's not holding it out. He's holding oh, it. Oh, he's holding it. Yeah. I, I will... While we rest, I will keep this. And when we set out, I will keep it. Make sure there are no... Did... Lingering Wait, did you did you say you you're telling me that now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's make sure there are no lingering effects from this 
What do you mean? You're taking my stuff? You're stealing from me now? Do friends. I have to knock your ass out again? Once again, you didn't knock me out. You knocked the person in my head out. I had no control. That's the issue. We need to make sure that you're in control. Well, that's we just why got this... your trust. <laughs> I knew there was something fishy that first night. I didn't quite catch it, but I knew something was up. You that's got our trust. nothing to do with what just happened. That was that damn staff. Which I'm assuming, did Sildar leave with the staff? Did he leave yet? Uh, Sildar is, is staying there with you guys, but yeah, he's got the, the oh, staffs yeah, no, all wrapped okay. up. Yeah. Sildar he's seems to be staff. like go team, whatever your name is. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Arthas definitely was the staff, but we need to make sure that you remain in control. I'm always in control of myself. Not, when you're not about up. 20 minutes ago. Well, because that was the staff. Then you weren't in control of yourself. You're you're literally <laughs> counteracting your own argument. <laughs> as you try to confuse me. I'm straightforward, straight shooter. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like to be stolen from. It was for your own protection. Do like you think and our protection, to be honest? That's fine. I just need a nap anyway. Arthas, oh. after your nap, tell us if you dream anything weird. Be up front. Gain our trust back. Like, if I dream anything weird? I See something? Someone you talk to you? weird voices in your head. Voices? Okay. Just to be okay. sure. Okay. I'm not hiding anything. Because if there's a spider in that staff, who knows what kind of venom has been in, put into your stream? What kind of words or toxins or whatever? Fair enough. You notice Grista is like, yeah, yeah, oh, geez. Man, every time I leave you guys alone, there's always like some sort of chaos. I heard the noise. I just stayed out. To, to be fair, I just stayed in the back. Right. Smart. And now I come out. A couple of stuff that I got to clean up. It's okay, though. <laughs> I heard Sildar. He was talking about it. I heard that other weird wizard dude going. You guys seem like you guys got to work some stuff out. But I'll have food ready for you since some of you weren't able to eat the breakfast. It's okay. It's okay. Chris, you're feel, great. Feel free to... Feel free to uh, cook the spot, cook and serve the spider. We have no use for it. Oh, what? What the, the, spider? It's gone. The spider's gone. Yeah, the spider watch was you, dimension you, doored out. You watched it oh, okay. literally go through a door. Were you in stasis? Apparently, I was. Yeah, it, 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 it happens. Well. Uh, then fair enough. I mean, you guys kind of just got out of bed, but you guys look like you want to crawl back in bed. Not going to lie. At least take a break. I... I'm going to take a nap. Okay. Arthur goes back in the other room to take a nap. If any of you want to have any conversations, you can. Sildar. Yeah, Hordo. I'm worried. You and me both. But what are your worries? Well, now we got another one. Hmm. But I'm worried about Gundren. It's been too long now. Gundren's resilient. Uh, he is a dwarf. And it seems like what you said, and you said that Yarno said that he was still alive. So, perhaps they're not just after Gundren or something. But if he's still alive, there's still a chance, Ordo. I think they're after this find. Hmm. This cave of wonders he spoke about. You did have but the they map. Need, 
They need the information. They need the map. And they need. I feel like they need another piece. We only found an empty map case. That's true. But the other thing that worries me is we haven't heard anything from Thundrin or uh, Nundro either. Aye. Tharden. Recluses. Probably yeah. laying on some hillock somewhere. Well, I doubt that they would let Gundren wander for too long, but... I don't know. I'm just worried all along. All around, right. Hordal. And now we've got Arthas, too. Watcher, how are you feeling? I'm... so confused why all of this is going on in one place. There's a lot of... Factions, I guess, for lack of a better word, going on, and I'm not quite clear where Arthas still where Arthas still lands, given his actions. I staff was bad news. I was just starting to trust the damn chipmunk too. Well, I know this sounds weird, but you did have your backs before, and it. This is, I mean, this is just one instance. Now, don't get me wrong. It is a grave instance, nonetheless. I I'll give him a second chance. That's what Gundren would do. <laughs> Everybody gets a second chance or a third or a fourth. I admire you dwarves. You warforged too. The stuff that you've seen and still all optimistic about the world I give you credit mm. oh one last thing Sildar yes any training moves I might be able to work on on the road since you're not coming along for me to beat up on well maybe uh, <laughs> maybe when you come back I'll, I'll be able to um, have something for you I yeah. I'm a little worried too because if Cornelius said what he said and said that the Lord's Alliance didn't send anyone to help me that's bad news all around seems to me that they're waiting no, waiting for us to find it I would agree with you Hordal and that worries me even more and maybe we don't tell them when we do Give it back to the people of Fendelver, or Fendelin. Let them thrive. Yeah. But I can only imagine that they're going to try to bring up the Fendelver Pact. That place was shared between dwarves, gnomes, and humans. But one step at a time. Aye. Save the politics for later. Agreed. Grista comes uh, back to you, Arthas. Hey, yeah, Arthas, um, do you need anything? Uh, like, like what? What are you offering? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I just kind of heard some of the talk and stuff and just wanted <clears> to make <throat> sure that you were okay, you know? No, I'm good. Thanks for checking in on me. You know, those sure. guys I feel don't trust don't trust me, but that's just my life. No one ever trusts me. Freaking damn thing possesses me and makes me fight them, and, and then they they you know I had no control, and they don't they still don't trust me, even though they know that it was the the damn item that that possessed me, and agree with it, and we're told by that weird looking old guy that came in here. Well, yeah, that, I know. You know, that's, I just, know. that's just my life. People but, don't trust my kind. I've yeah. just learned to live with it. Well, I mean, they do kind of seem like good people, and you're kind of a good person, too. Uh, you actually came over to try to help me when all that stuff happened, so, you know, I, I, I kind of feel a connection with you. Yeah, I feel a connection with you, too, Krista. Yeah, well, you know, I, I am the one that gets the alcohol, but hopefully it's more besides <laughs> that, you know. 
Well, sometimes I don't like to bother you. You know, I know you're busy, so I just go get my own. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you got a good batch nonetheless. Just give them time, you know? Yeah, I got nothing against the guys. I feel like they got stuff against me at times, but, you know, I've always got their back. Never give them... I've never given him any real issues or stabbed him in the back other than this damn warning that was, I, I can't, you know, don't know, I had no control over myself. Yeah, well, I mean, you also came out to us and, and showed us who you really were, so that's that's got to count for something. Yeah, I don't do that with many people. Yeah, all right. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, Arthas. Thank you, Krista. And he goes in to give her a hug. She gives you a hug back. <laughs> Watch the hands. Watch the hands. Both are right here. That's just my mage hand. Yeah, okay. <laughs> even even that alone is a little a little too close. I mean that, 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 mage that, hand that harassment. Long, uh, not gonna lie, that that long haired individual <laughs> was pretty good, but I I accept you for who you are, Arthas. I'm just joking. Yeah. I can fine. be whoever you want me to be, Krista. No, don't tempt me with a good time there, Arthas. That's all I like to do. Eggs and bacon? Know. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll have it ready for you. You rest up. I am. All right. Thanks, it, Krista. You're welcome. And you can all bed down. Unless any lingering. We got two minutes. Okay. So you all bed down, and you all get the benefit of a long rest. And what we will do is we will end the session right there and pick it back up on our journey towards the Seven Towers. So, I have to say, well done, players. I love it. You guys are doing a phenomenal job, and I know I put you in a weird situation, (laughs) but you guys did a really, really good job, and I couldn't thank you enough for that weird curveball that was thrown at you. Um, we did have a lot of people. Awesome. Uh, yeah, role playing, which is fantastic. I can't get enough. Uh, we did have a couple of likes on Facebook um, from uh, Betty. Uh, we also had myself, uh, but we did have a follow on Twitch. Thank you so much, uh, Stimpak yeah. Princess. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, then we Ooh. had some of our people showing up on the Twitch chat as well. Rays of Resonance coming in. As always, I greatly appreciate everything that you guys do. I appreciate the players so much. I sure hope that we had some entertainment value for you in some really awesome role playing. So I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, any parting words from the players? Thank you, DM, for that wonderful curveball. Yeah. That was that was fun. That was fun to do. Yeah, and Arthas is job. happy he stayed alive. Great job, Arthas. <laughs> great job, doing Arthas, that too. And yeah. playing it playing it the way you would is if you were actually Arthas, like in that form, spot on and well done, nice. sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy I didn't kill you. And I'm happy you didn't kill me. I have to and admit. Leave me my close. hands. I was close. And Arthas, your <laughs> your tactics were like good. Really good. Yeah, smart. Really, really good. Oh. Yeah, get, getting better with him. He's, he's learning. There you go. <laughs> Any other pardon words? Till next week. Yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Till next in. week. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And oh, we'll see you sometime next week. Take care. Woo. Hello, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed that episode of Autosave Before Entering presents The Lost Minds of Fandelver. My name is Tack Eeyore. I'm the DM, and if you like the content that we provided, I suggest you go ahead and hit that button down below, which is the subscribe button. We will upload all our videos to YouTube when we're done, and you can also catch us live on Twitch or Facebook. We'll see you there. <laughs>